Um, it starts off uh, with a long introduction. Heed well my words, for I am Mentor, guardian of Lord Tomb. I will tell you of times past, of darker days, where the realm was saved against all hope. For I fear the darkness is about to return. The sinister forces of Sargon, an evil sorcerer, had swept all before them. At a sign of the Black Banner and the massed hordes of dread, even the bravest warriors of the realm fled. The land was laid to waste, and all people despaired. I think I'm rather going to read this when we're going to play. I don't think it's so relevant for the rules, so let's just carry on. Hey guys, welcome back to the Nerd Hangout. Today we are continuing our Hero Quest series. This is how to play Hero Quest. We're going to have a rule tutorial. I'm going to read through the guidelines. We're going to talk about it, maybe show a little scenario here and there on the game board. It's going to be fun and it's going to be cool to get my mind refreshed about how we play the game. I don't know if there are any changes from this one uh, to the old one. I do not think so, if I remember correctly, what we were told about this new edition. Now, I am going to make this a two-parter because the content is just going to be too long. Uh, I think it's easier to have a 30 to 40 minute episode instead of one and a half hour and stuff like that. So yeah, we're gonna have it in two episodes. So let's get into the rule book, how to play the game. I'm going to have down below timestamps so you can see exactly what I talk about and when I talk about it, if you're looking for something very specific. So if it isn't in this episode, be sure to check the next one. It will definitely be there. We're going through the entire book, guys. So there's no time to waste. Let's just get a crack lacking. Hey guys, welcome back. I am so excited to look at the rules for Hero Quest. Now, I will make a timestamp down in the descriptions to tell you when is which, if you're looking for something specific that you want to know, which Google did not clarify too much for you. But today we are going to look at the rules for the new game system of HeroQuest. Now there's a lot in here and I will grain through it to see what is relevant. I will chew the fish and I will spit out the bones. So not everything is probably relevant. So this video does not become like two days long. Um, it starts off uh, with a long introduction. I think I'm rather going to read this when we're going to play. I don't think it's so relevant for the rules, so let's just carry on. The introduction to the book says, Welcome to Hero Quest game is a fantasy adventure set deep within a hidden stone labyrinth. The maze of underground rooms and corridor is controlled by Sargon and the evil sorceress's force of dread. Our valiant heroes have been summoned by Bentor, the good and the ancient sage, to do battle with evil. There is the ultimate heroic challenge. Descend into the treacherous world of the unknown and restore honor to the realm. Destroy the forces of dread. Bonded by their loyalty to the realm, the brave heroes unite. Stepping curiously, they journey deeper and deeper into the dark, hidden world. Basic rules set up. One player takes the role of Sargon, the evil sorcerer, and controls the game. That will be the GM. The other players assume the roles of the heroes, the barbarian, the dwarf, the elf, and the wizard. A game for two to five players. Hero Quest is played in 14 sequential gameplay sessions called Quests. Each quest is described in detail in the quest book. Yeah. One quest may take an hour or two to play with each subsequent quest increasing in difficulty. Oh yeah. During a quest, the hero may acquire valuable treasures. These riches may be used between quests to purchase powerful weapons and protective armor and armory. That is a cool concept that you actually can pay for items between quests. I don't remember that from the old game, but I was very young. Uh, the heroes work together to defeat Sarkon and the evil sorcerers, forces of dread, into which will winning is not the goal. Unite the heroes, stand it, divide it, they fall. So the heroes are not playing against each other, but they are going to play against me. The adventure never ends. Additional quests are available in quest packs sold separately. Cool. 
game content, we are not going to read through that. If you are playing for the first time, punch out the cardboard tiles from the parts sheets and put them aside. Do you really need to be informed of that? Choose your role, that would be one of us chooses to play Sargon and then the other heroes will choose what kind of hero it will be. The elf. <sighs> one player must take on the role of Sargon, the evil sorcerer, yours truly. Uh, the other players then assume the roles of the heroes, the barbarian, the dwarf, the elf and the wizard. If fewer than five players are playing, one person must still play as Sargon. The remaining players can control more than one hero. Note that the quests are more challenging if you are playing with fewer than four heroes. So we will try to get five players. That would be fun. Now the important role of Sargon is stated as such. The role of Sargon is a vital one in the game. The person who plays as Sargon serves as the game master. This means you sit behind the game master screen. You control the quest for the other players. You alone know where the monster's secret doors, treasures and traps are located in the labyrinth. You alone have access to the quest book. Anyone can play a Sargon. <laughs> But players who are familiar with the game may be more comfortable taking on this important role first. If you are playing as Sargon, as Sargon you will be running the quest. If necessary, read through the game rules first, as we are doing right now, so you understand how to do this. I know. And as you will see below, you must read through the first quest in the quest book. I will do that when we're going to play. Remember, the quest book is for yours I only, Chashtan. However, there are sections of each quest that you must read to the players. These passages are noted throughout the quest book. So how Sargon sets up the game. Sargon, to set up the game, probably you must follow these important steps. Number one, open the quest book and read the first quest. Uh, trial, this quest must be played first. Read silently, silently to yourself. <laughs> Each quest features three different sections, the parchment text, the quest map, and the quest notes. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna reveal that and show that to you here, but it's all in here. And it looks something like this. That's it, that's all. Now you can pause it if you want to, I wouldn't do that if I were you, because I just revealed some vital information. But that's the way it looks. You will be shown no more. The parchment text in this book outlines the hero's challenges as well as the reward they will receive if they are successful. So it says what they have to do and what reward they get from doing so. This section is always read out loud to the hero players at the beginning of the game. So you will see that practiced when we have a game session. How I'm going to do that. The quest map is right here. So here we have the quest map. We have the heroes here. The quest map shows how the game board is to be laid out. Does the game progress? Okay, this is actually what the book reveals. How it will look like this. No more. That's enough. That's more than enough. And of course then I will read in the book as the GM and... It is a copy of this and it will see it will tell me exactly how everything will look for example these are the ones that were to puncture to be punctured out let's just do that oh what a nice feeling the heroes will start in one room like this and of course there are gonna be all four of them and this book is gonna show me exactly the entire game map as it is the heroes will only see what is inside this room. Let's say that it, the only thing they see is a closed door and a dusty chair. It says specifically, do not place anything on the game board at this time. Only reveal the layout when the hero figures have moved to positions on the game board that requires you to do so. Yeah, yeah. so this is the room uh, and if anything is blocking their vision, then I will add things afterwards. That means that these are locked walls. They don't see anything else except what is in that room. Obvious much. Now the quest notes. Read the quest notes thoroughly before you start the quest. They explain what happens in certain rooms. Okay, so they, it will specify also what will happen in each room.
Um, you will later dissolve the information in the quest notes to the heroes as the quest unfolds and they move into certain rooms and corridors. Yeah, it will say there will be a letter in the room on the map like an A and then it will be punctured here. A, when the door is open, it cracks so it makes a lot of sound and the heroes are awake. For example, for example, it doesn't say that at all. I'm just making this shit up, but it could be something like that. It's all noted in the quest book. And then we have the character cards. The Barbarian, uh, the Dwarf, uh, the Elf, and the Wizard. Let's get it all in frame. Spread the four characters cards uh, faced up on the player's table. The number of dice and starting points for each hero appear on each card. You can see it right here. So if we take, for example, the wizard, he has one attack dice, two defense dice. His starting points are four of body and six of mind. His movement is two red dice. His starting weapon is a dagger and starting armor is none. Now, Talking about the defend dice, our dice are here, and these are our movement dice. Uh, these reflect the fighting power of the hero's weapon. During the quest, the hero's attack strength is continually changing by events. So yeah, um, if we take again the wizard, attack die is only one die, and he has two in defense dice. We talked a little bit about it in the last episode, me and Charshtan, and... It is very simple. If you have one attack right, you roll one die. And if you get a shield, you do nothing. If you get a skeleton, you make an attack. And if, let's just say that a goblin has been hidden underneath this chair, he jumps out and he jumps for the dwarf, makes an attack. The dwarf has to, what does the goblin even have? So these are the, the monsters. They are actually very cool as well. So the goblin. He has movement squares called 10. The monsters have their numbers already on the cards. So when I have to move, Sargon is always last. His initiative is always last. Let's just say that he attacks the dwarf. He rolls an attack. Two shields, that means he does nothing. And the dwarf has two defense die. Um, he didn't have to roll anything because he did make it, but he defended it off with one shield. So if he did have one attack, the, the goblin, one attack, then he would have made it still. Okay, it's very easy. It's, it's just normal calculation. You need two for two, and if you have less, you take damage, and if you have more, you are secured. To defend dice, these reflect the ability of the hero to dodge or absorb enemy hits. During the quest, the hero's defense strength is continually changing by events. So yeah, if you get more armor or a situation has it, you get more defense or more attack when you uh, buy weapons and stuff like that. The body points, this is interesting. Um, these reflect the hero's physical strength. The barbarian is the strongest with eight points. The wizard is the weakest with four points. Okay, mind points. These reflect the hero's wisdom, intelligence, and resistance to magic influence. The wizard has the greatest mental strength. Uh, six points. The barbarian has at least two points. Okay, yeah. So it just says what it is, not really what it does, but I do think that you're going to need some magic points to cast a spell or something like that. Direct the heroes, players to fulfill their character sheet. There is a character sheet. It's very simple, very straightforward. Here, you name your character and you say which character there is. There will be elf. You put in your attack dice, your defend dice, and your starting points. You also write your weapons, your armor, and your body point. During the quest, the hero's body and mind points are affected by events. Points can be gained or lost. Body points can be charted on, here, on the hero's character sheet. Any treasure found on the quest must also be recorded here. Players should save their sheets and bring them to each game session. That makes sense. Quest completed, how much coins you have, potions and other items. Body points must be your health, your overall health. Position the game master screen between you and the game board. Hello. 
Place the quest book between you and the game master screen. Very obvious. And separate the game pieces, separate the doors, figures, monsters, and all the cardboard games tiles into four piles. Uh, I think I will be the judge of that because I think this is so neatly stacked in here that I am just going to leave it in. I am not going to remove it at all. Uh, number eight, study the quest map and place the pieces in the starting room like I have done here. Let's just remove that goblin again. Do not put out any traps or secret doors. Uh, do not reveal treasure at this time. No, that, that would be, that's kind of obvious. Uh, sort the cards into separate piles, equipment, treasure, artifact, monsters, yeah. And we went through uh, which the cards are last time. I don't have to do that again. One thing maybe that will be uh, maybe relevant are how to divide the spells in at the beginning of the game. Uh, there are four kinds of spell, air, fire, water, and earth. Dividing the spells, direct the hero players to divide the hero spells. The wizard chooses first. He chooses one of the four. Next, the elf chooses one spell group from the three. That remains finally the two remaining spell groups go to the wizard so the wizard will have all three of the bunch and the elf will only get one so that is the way that we will divide them the spells and their effects are explained in detail on the corresponding spell card so there's no need to go through that uh, suggestions if it is the player's first quest the wizard should take the fire spell the elf should take the earth spell and the remaining spell should go to the wizard ah. I think the, spell, uh, the players will decide that themselves. Place the dice. Finally, put three white combat dices and two red dices near the game board. Where the hero players can easily reach them. Keep three white combat dices for yourself. I will do that. Now you are ready to play Sargon. Read a glimpse into the world. Low hero quest out loud to the players. We will do that when we play. Okay, so that's basically how you play Sargon. Okay, so at the beginning of the quest, Sargon will read the parchment from the quest book here. So that he will read it out loud to the heroes. Like we said earlier, it is important that the heroes understand the history behind the quest and the goals set before them. Um, yeah, it will make it, make it more interested if they understand what they're doing and it will be important to know what they're going into and what their mission is. Uh, there's a side note here, only read out loud the parchment text section information containing the quest map of the quest notes must, for now, be kept a secret for the heroes. Order of play. I think is that's what I mentioned earlier. Player begins with a hero seated to Sargon's left and continues clockwise. All After all heroes have completed their turns, it is the evil sorcerer's turn. Sargon may move all monsters currently on the game board. This uh, sequence continues until the quest is achieved or until the heroes leave the underworld. A good starting setup would be for the barbarian to sit to Sargon's left, followed by the dwarf, the elf, and the seed. What the suggestions? <laughs> okay. On any player's turn, whether players of the role of Sargon or of a hero, a player does one of the following on their turn. One, you move your figure and perform an action. Or, perform an action and move your figure. It can't be more simple. You have two options. You take an action or you move. You cannot move, take an action and then move the rest of your movement. You move full movement, you take an action or you take an action and you move full movement. Okay, and these are the actions. Action number one, attack. Action number two, cast a spell. Action number three, search for treasure. Uh, action number four, search for secret doors. Action number five, search for traps. And six, disarm a trap. Now, I said before in the last video uh, that I thought it was only the dwarf that does it. That's not true. All of them can disarm a trap, but I do believe that he has some kind of advantage on it which I can't remember right now. I will get back to that. These actions are also listed on each turn order card for easy reference and are explained in detail in uh, six hero actions. Yeah, so this is actually kind of cool. All the players get one of these cards also. These are action cards to tell the players uh, what they could do on the turn, the movement and action, how to move and how to take their actions. It is very easy. As a hero, you normally begin and end a quest in the room marked with the stairway. That would be uh, this one. This is the room that you begin or start with, always. 
room unless otherwise specified in the quest book. The stairway leads you down, 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 down deep into the evil stronghold of dread. To safely complete a quest, you must return to the stairway, for it is only there that you are truly free from harm. To determine how many square spaces to move, roll the two dice. That will be these one. Ooh, Fimsek Shay. Eight. Then move carefully along the corridors and into the rooms, square by square. There will be these, or into this hallway. There will be no chance for him to get into that room because there's no door there, but there is a door right here. On the game board, the corridors are shown by areas with light gray flooring. Yeah, that will be in uh, here as well. So you can see that some of them are red. Uh, these are not used and the other one are more white. That's enough for you. Corridors are one of two squares wide, the rooms are enclosed by white lines to walls. Here are the rules of movement. You do not have to move the entire distance indicated by the dice roll. Okay, so you, if you get seven in by the dice roll, you do not have to take full movement. That is, that's cool. Uh, you cannot pass over monsters, you can't jump over them. Um, you can't move through walls or move diagonally, so you can't go vertically. Uh, but I do believe actually that you can get some special magical boots or potions, which will allow you to do that. Uh, you may only enter rooms through doors, like this one. You may not share a square with another hero or with a monster, except when you are on the stairs or in a pit trap. Okay. Looking and opening doors. As a hero, while you are moving, you may look down a corridor or through an open door. Looking gives you the opportunity to see what is directly within the line of sight, such as a closed door. So if in this scenario, if there is a door on the other side, that is the only thing you will see, because there is always a straight line in sight. Within your line of sight, such a closed door, blocked square spaces and monsters. Looking is not one of the six actions on your turn. You may move adja adjacent to a closed door and ask Sarkon to open it. Sarkon, that means that if you move here, the dwarf goes over here and he stands between the two doors like this. Now he can see also what is on the sides. So if we say that in this scenario, the hall is closed off like this with some more stones then there is only one way for him to go and that is through the locked door and it says on your turn you may move adjacent to a closed door and ask Sarkon to open it uh, Sarkon opens the door by removing the closed door piece and replacing it with an open door piece very easy Boop. so basically you just say the command that you open the door and then I will Open it. Opening a door is also not one of your six actions. Okay, so it doesn't cost you an action to open the door. Both uh, looking and opening doors are simply considered to be additional things. It's a free action. You can do it on your turn. All doors start out closed. Once a door is open, it can never be closed. Okay, I didn't know that. I don't remember it being like that, but hey. Getting caught in a trap, drinking potions, and picking things up also do not count as an action. They can be done at any time during your turn. So how does Sargon react to movement? As Sargon, you must carefully watch a hero's movement, continually refer to the quest map in the quest book. When a hero looks down a corridor, place on the game board. Yeah, so it's time to move somewhere, like I did here. Now, if he looks, if there's in something in his line of sight, I will add that to the table right now, like there would be chest here if it says so in the game book of course huh? when a hero looks down a corridor place on the game board any doors blocked square tiles and monsters that are directly within the site like i said straight line if the line passes through a wall or a closed door then the miniature tile is not visible when a hero opens the door place on the game board the monster's treasure chest and any other items that belong in the room do not put any traps or secret doors. Do not reveal treasures at this time. Okay, I would not. If this was a hidden treasure, I would not reveal this. Uh, I thought it was just a piece of furniture, but it might as well just have been a normal table. Okay, but so it says actually here that when they open a the door, I will put out everything in the room. I just think that it's kind of kind in conflict with their line of sight. The blocked uh, squares like this one, as Arkon, you must place the blocked square tiles on the game board as soon as it becomes visible to the heroes. These tiles show uh, where extra walls have been built. 
either neither heroes nor monsters can move through block squares. The six heroes action. Okay, the attack action. So let's put out the scenario that the dwarf has entered this room and so has his friend the barbarian. And inside we have a skeleton. Look at that. Look at that. No. First action, attack. As a hero, you may attack any monster that you are adjacent to. You are adjacent if you are directly to the side, front or rear of another square of which the monster is located. You may, however, only attack once per turn. Your attack strength depends on your attack weapon. The stronger the weapon, the greater the number of attack dice you will use. Some weapons allow you to attack diagonally or from a distance, but most weapons do not. So in this scenario, the dwarf is the only one who can attack because he's standing right in front of him. The barbarian cannot diagonally, but however, he can move and then attack, but he cannot move, attack and move. So he has to make a decision that that is what he will do because he cannot move after taking the attack action. Uh, you may only attack with one weapon at a time. Nice to know. At the start of the first quest, each hero is armed with a specific weapon referred to the hero's character card for their starting weapon and attack dice number. The barbarian begins with the most powerful starting weapon, the broadsword. The dwarf starting weapon is a short sword. They also possess intuition, a special knack for disarming the traps. There it was. The elf also starts with a short sword. They are a good fighter and have some knowledge of the magical arts. The elf begins with each quest with three magic spells of one spell group. The wizard starts with a small dagger. They have great knowledge of magic and are master spellcasters. They begin each quest with nine magic spells, three spell groups. We've talked about that. However, they are hindered by their inability to wear normal armor or use large weapons. So hold back, Mr. Mage! This one's not for you. You will die like a weakling. How a hero attacks. We've been talking about that, but we can read through that very quickly. As a hero, you must roll the white combat dice to attack a monster. The number of the dice to roll depends on the weapon you are using for the attack. Check your character sheet for your attack strength. If you fail any uh, skulls, you fail the attack in this Scenario, I got one, so I received one attack. Each skull that you roll is considered a hit, resulting in one body point of damage scored against the monster. If hit, the monster immediately defends. By rolling its defend dice, if the hero's monster body points are zero, the monster is considered dead and is removed from the game board. So let's try that out. He tries to defend himself. He fails. I need... To defend with the black ones. So he loses a uh, life and he has only one. So ah! he's dead. A defending monster rolls the number of defending dice shown in the monster chart on the game master screen. Each black shield rolled by the defending monster blocks one hit from the attacking hero. Many monsters are killed with only one hit. Some monsters, however, require more than one hit. So let's say that this is a super skeleton for some reason. He has more lives. That means that here is where I, these tiles come in that I didn't know anything about before. Many monsters are killed with only one hit. Some monsters, however, require more than one. Refer to the monster's chart. It will, it will say so in the book. In the game master screen or on the monster's body points. For those monsters requiring more than one hit, monster's damage is tracked by the use of skull tiles. Sargon, for each hit your monster sustains, you must record the hit by placing a skull under the monster. Okay, so if that was one hit, then I will place one underneath the... Because he has taken one hit, and if he will take one more, he will fall down and die. If the monster survives the attack, it cannot attack the hero back until Sargon's next turn. A, a trip to the armory. Now this will be interesting. As a hero, you may collect valuable treasures such as gold coins during a quest. Between quests, you may use gold coins to purchase powerful weapons and protective armor from the armor. See the equipment deck. You may purchase any number of items from the deck. The items are always in stock, even if a player decides to use the card for a quick reference. Now, 
These weapons allow you to increase your attack and defense strength and may also give you unique combat advantages. For instance, daggers and crossbows are special weapons due to their ability to hit a monster from a distance. Some long weapons like the staff and the longsword allow you to attack diagonally. The attack is made and defended normally. Cool. Uh, using diagonal weapons allow more than one hero to attack a monster blocking a doorway. Yeah, okay. So it will be if the monster is outside the door here and he has a special weapon which is diagonal, then he could attack diagonally through the door. Both the wizard and the barbarian may attack the monsters blocking the doorway. The wizard with the staff may attack diagonally, the barbarian with the broadsword may attack adjacently. Okay. And for complete information on all of the weapons and armor, please refer to the equipment cards. We will do that. Action number two, casting spells. Okay, so casting spells. Uh, this is the next action. Some heroes, like the elf and the wizard, may cast spells instead of attacking. They may cast a spell at anything they can see, but only on their turn. See line of sight. For a hero to cast a spell, the target must be visible. The heroes and monsters are only visible if the unobstructed straight line can be traced from a spellcaster to the target point, so it will be in a straight line. A good rule of thumb, draw an invisible straight line between the center of the square the spellcaster is on and the center of the square the target is on. If the line does not cross a wall, closed door, hero or monster, the target is declared visible. If the line just touches a corner or a wall, edge the following diagram shows example of what is visible. You can shoot behind corners. As a hero, you may cast a spell on your on yourself, another hero, or on a monster. Once a spell is cast, the spell card is discarded for the remainder of the quest. Each spell may be cast only once per quest. Use them wisely. Action number three. Searching for treasure. Treasure is found only in rooms, not in corridors. A room may be searched by all four heroes, but... Each individual hero may only search the room once, and may do so only on their turn. Some treasures are protected by a trap. Okay, that will be ho harder for you to see. And how hero searches for a treasure. As a hero, you may search the room for treasure. It will take an action. Only if the room is uninhabited with the monster. So you have to wait until the monsters are cleared out before you can search for traps. Didn't know that. As a hero, you must first verbally declare your search. I am searching for traps. Uh, do so by saying, I am searching for treasure. I am searching for treasure. Searching for treasure means you are looking around, opening things, searching for interesting objects and gold coins. Regardless of what square you are in the room, do not move your hero figure when you search. If no special treasure is called out in the quest book, you must draw a random card from the treasure card deck and read it out loud. The card could offer a variety of things, including riches and magical potions. Record any gold coins and potions on your character sheet. These valuable treasure cards, gold coins, and potions are not returned to the treasure deck until the next quest. If you wish, you may share the gold coin treasure with the other heroes. Later between quests, you may use the treasure to purchase additional weapons and armor from the armory. But be careful. Almost half of the treasure cards containing wandering monsters and hazards. These types of treasure cards are returned to the treasure deck and may be drawn again in the next treasure search. The hero's cards must be shuffled before a hero draws one from the card. Ooh, danger. Yeah, that is right. Okay, so you can actually search in every room for a treasure. Uh, if there is a specific treasure, it will be revealed as a chest. If not, then you will be taking a treasure card. We are going fast through this, guys. Now, how Sargon reacts to a hero's search for treasure. <gasps> you did what? As Sargon, if there is a special treasure, as described in the quest notes, you must read out loud the treasure description. Once the treasure has been found, the specific treasure is discovered only once by the first hero who searches the room for treasure. Even the other heroes later search that same room. If there is no special treasure in the search room, direct the searching hero to draw a treasure card as described. However, if the hero draws a wandering monster or has a card, do the following. These monsters pop out of the holes and hidden places and wander into rooms. The monsters that appear is listed in the quest notes. As Sargon, you must place the monsters next to the treasure searcher and immediately roll attack. Okay, refer to the monster's chart on the game master screen for a current number of attack dice to use. On this round, you can only attack the treasure searcher. 
after the attack the wandering monster remains on the game board and can be moved like other monsters okay if the surrounding squares are occupied and it is not possible to place a monster next to the searcher, put the monster in the room as close as the searcher as possible. Then on your next turn, the monster can move and attack like the monsters. Okay, so if if he is blocked somehow by a fellow hero, if they are surrounded like this in a corner and the chest is here, then the monster cannot be put anywhere because yeah, he can't attack diagonally either. So he loses that attack of opportunity, worth to know. Okay, how do heroes respond to wandering monsters? As a hero, you roll combat dice to defend against the wandering monster's attack. That would be make it obvious. He attacks you, you roll defense. You may then continue with your turn. Now, hazards. As a hero, when you draw a hazard card from the treasure card, read the card out loud and follow its instructions. Yeah, so basically just do what the card says. Uh, I think I'm going to look at more about the treasure and continue the book for tomorrow's recording. And I became tired there and we ended this episode. This was the first part of the rule book. We got a very long way into it and in the next episode, so next Sunday, we're going to continue to read through the book. So we're going through the entire tutorial in uh, these two episodes back to back. So if the things that I did not get into in this episode, be sure to subscribe and you will be notified when the next episode comes where we go through the rest of the rule book to learn how to play Hero Quest. Hope you liked the episode. If you do, give me a like and see you next time, nerds. Goodbye.